let's go into this, the steps and the, the process that actually occurs in this application. There's, there's five key steps and it's gathering accurate cooling power and space data, making it quick and easy to visualize, applying the tools of the analytics, doing the optimization, and then continuing this on an ongoing basis. And now we'll start to look at these, each of these in a little more detail. So when you consider gathering, I've said it before, but granular data makes this really uh, powerful. Since we're using computers now, we can gather a lot of data. You know, that's been one of the criticisms of the, you know, the uh, rise of DSIM is that it provides a lot of data, but not a lot of action. It provides a lot of information and it's hard for data center operators to sort through that and know what to do with it. This is a way to make sense of that data and create actionable results. Gather that granular data and then visualize it. As you see on the next slide, we need to provide graphical information about what's going on. I've been in a number of computer rooms another day, uh, that have deployed these tools. And what happens is that a screen like you see here on the right is the primary main screen in the NOC. It's the one that you can walk by and at a glance, see what's going on. And you know, hopefully this isn't what uh, the computer room looks like, the temperature profile. Uh, it would be, this is the pre-optimized version, um, but it would be that post-optimized version. And it allows people to very quickly uh, see what's going on. And then you know, behind just this view of the computer room, uh, there are a lot of very quick to understand historical uh, graphs and trends, the and intuitive information that can be gathered uh, and represented through reporting. Analyzing it, um, sharing that information in very detailed ways. You can go in and see trends about what's going on. And one of the things that stands out to me as I do talks around the world on cooling optimization is that everybody knows how many tons of cooling they have installed in the data center, but nobody knows, or very, very few people know how much cooling is actually being delivered by each of their cooling units. So that kind of analysis uh, can be very easily done and represented in, in a very clear format. And then as I've talked about the optimization process, this is, this is key. And this is where um, the software provides actionable recommendations to the operators. There are a couple of different approaches. Uh, the approach that EchoSense has taken, and, and in these examples, that's primarily what we're talking about because that's where we have our most experience with these tools is, is with that solution. But there, there, uh, I'll talk about what uh, Google has done uh, later on in the presentation. Um, this, the EchoSense solution provides recommendations. It doesn't actually control anything in the facility. So it engages the site personnel in the process of optimizing temperature set points, adjusting the floor grills, changing the cooling unit fan speeds, um, and even suggesting recommendations for um, rack placement, where analyzing and, and identifying where there is redundant cooling capacity in the room and where um, you know, a, a new uh, deployment can be supported. And this is all done, you know, in real time and updated every few minutes, you know, hundreds of thousands of data points can be collected, you know, per day and analyzed by these systems. And the key to this is ongoing, you know, it's possible for any individual with, you know, some experience in this field to walk into a data center. Now, I've done this many times, uh, go in and take a bunch of uh, measurements and provide a lot of recommendations, um, make adjustments, rearrange set points, uh, rearrange supply tiles, get the room optimized, but then it, it drifts. And over time, uh, all of those benefits are fade away because of the change that occurs in the data center. You know, this graph shows that when you deploy this, these tools and you start making changes, you get huge benefits 
you get huge return on those changes very quickly. And that's really nice because it really helps with the simple payback of deploying these tools. But what's really important is the right side of this graph, and that's maintaining those benefits uh, in perpetuity, making sure that the data center doesn't drift out of efficiency, as I, as I mentioned, um, making sure that as significant ad moves or changes occur, that everything is being adjusted to make sure that the least amount of energy um, being consumed, uh, the least amount of energy is being consumed to keep the IT equipment happy. You know, Tracy mentioned that 35 in a typical data center, 35% of the energy being consumed is going to cooling. And that's 35% um, of the total load uh, going into the facility. It, and the math turns out that it's somewhere around 73% of the non-IT load. So if you just say, take away what's going to the IT equipment, you just say, okay, of the other power, how much is going to cooling? And it's like 73 quarters of the power. So a huge point of leverage in optimizing the cooling in these facilities. Mm -hmm.